So um, session eight, last session of Light in the Darkness. And um, we started uh, originally way back with um, uh, Ephesians and then we went off a little bit and then we come back to Ephesians. But we started uh, in Ephesians with the passage in chapter five where Paul talks about light. He talks about um, us being light. He says in um, uh in verse well let's go down we'll read from verse six of chapter five of ephesians let no one deceive you with empty words for because of these things the wrath of god comes upon the sons of disobedience therefore do not be partakers with them for you were formerly darkness but now you are light in the lord walk as children of the light for the fruit of light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. For it is disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light. For everything that becomes visible is light. For this reason, it says, awake sleeper and arise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. So this verse eight, for you were formerly darkness, you as a believer in the Lord Jesus, you were formerly darkness, you belonged to the darkness, you actually added to the darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. And that has really been the, 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 the theme statement, if you like, of uh, the study that we've done, light in the darkness. And, um, and we've looked, we started actually, I think, in chapter three of Ephesians, and we've worked our way through them. And one of the things that um, uh, you realize as you look at uh, Paul's letter to the Ephesians is that he draws a lot on the uh, prophecy in Isaiah. He draws a lot on the scriptures that you can read in Isaiah. In, in this way, he says here, awake sleeper and arise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. That's a quote from Isaiah. And um, even in Ephesians chapter six, where Paul lists out the different articles of the armor that we've been given, um, where he says, stand finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might, verse 10. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. And then he's going to go on and list the separate articles of the armor that we have been given that are all held together by the belt of truth, the word of God. And he takes that directly from Isaiah. Every article, apart from the shield of faith, every article in the uh, armor of God in, that Paul quotes in Ephesians 6 is talked about in Isaiah, because Isaiah, more than all the other prophetic books, gives a complete picture, not just of the first coming of Christ, but also the second coming of Christ. And that's why it's, it's you know, it is a, a magnificent prophetic book. Um, Isaiah speaking, you know, 100 years or so before the Jews will go into exile in Babylon, talking about them going in and them coming out and talking about the second, the first coming of Christ and then the second coming of Jesus Christ. And in it all, he is called the prophet of light, because particularly from chapter 40 of Isaiah to chapter 66, his whole emphasis is on the light who is Christ Jesus, the light, who is Messiah. And that, that truth is taken in the New Testament and spoken about in many different ways. And as I say, in Ephesians, Paul uses the image of Messiah as light, and he weaves his letter to the Ephesians around that truth. And, um, and all of what Isaiah is talking about and the things that it, Paul is talking about in Ephesians, in fact, all his letters, the focal point of everything is the one who is light. The, the, the focal point is Jesus. So when Isaiah is prophesying, he is prophesying about the coming of Messiah, who is the light, who is 
light. And when Paul and the other New Testament writers are writing about um, the light, they're taking images that Isaiah prophesied and they're applying them to Jesus Christ who came the first time to live and to die and to be resurrected and to offer salvation to everyone who would put their trust in him. And it's just an amazing, you know, I often talk about the threads that go from Genesis to Revelation and this thread of light begins in, Gen in, in Genesis chapter one and will finish in Revelation and on the way through through we pick up uh, details of this light and we find you know you'll remember in John in John's gospel John chapter one John will begin with in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was in the beginning with God all things what came into being through him and apart from him nothing that has come into being came into being in him was life and the life was the light of men that's john chapter one verse one through five um, in him was life verse four and the life was the light of men the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it and that word comprehend can mean overpower so the in him was life in Christ in the word in the word who was with God and the word who is God in him was life and that life the life John calls it, it is the light of men and that light that light who is Christ Jesus shines in the darkness and the darkness can not only not comprehend it it cannot overcome it overpower it so this truth about Jesus being light you know in Genesis right at the beginning God will say light you know we translate that as let there be light God said let there be light but actually there's no let there be in the original language it's just that God spoke light and light was there and, and all the way through the Bible, we are, the, the different writers will point us to the fact that light is, is God himself, is the Messiah, is the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we got to Ephesians, Paul, who, who wants so much for us to understand that we are not who we were, that we've come out of darkness into light, out of death into life, out of the kingdom of Satan, into the kingdom of God, and that now we are our light we are light it's not just that we carry the light or that some days we will be the light this is the truth that you and I as believers we are light and as such we are shining in the darkness in this in this as Paul will say in Ephesians chapter 6 you know our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the powers against the world forces of this darkness and the way that you overpower darkness and overcome darkness is by introducing light and that is what God has done he has introduced light into darkness in the in the form of Jesus Christ and he Jesus has left us here on the planet to be light to be light and um that's what this has all been about this study of light in the darkness that's what it's for it's that we might understand that you know our lives complicated as they often are difficult as they often are are um, infused with the light of Christ that you and I shine you know sometimes you see those pictures don't you taken from above the atmosphere and you see the earth at night and there's this these lights all over the planet you know you can see them from afar these lights on the ground and that's that's just a picture for me of you and I you and I as believers we are light in the Lord and he has left us here to make a difference in the darkness and to show the light of Christ in our lives as we seek to live for him and not only has he left us here to do that as if we could do it on our own, because we have no power on our own. He has empowered us by giving us the spirit of light, the spirit of Christ to live within us. And it's that really that I want to finish with um, 
on this cause. And I want to take us back to Isaiah. I want to look at um, some scriptures in Isaiah that talk about what will be true when Messiah comes. And Isaiah is, of course, predominantly focusing on um, when Israel puts their trust in the Messiah, the Saviour who is coming. And for them, the, these verses in Isaiah chapter 40, they had the opportunity when Christ came the first time to receive the light for themselves. Um, but John, in John's gospel, he'll say he came for his own, but his own would not receive him. But for those who did receive him, he gave the, the um, power to become children of God. Sorry, I think that's a bit of a misquote. So John chapter one, um, verse 12, well, verse 11, he came to his own, Christ came to his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. You and I, who did receive the Lord Jesus Christ, were given the right to become children of God. And we entered the spiritual kingdom of God. We are now part of the kingdom of God spiritually on earth. We are part of the family of God, part of the body of Christ. We are part of a holy temple in the Lord. We've talked about all those things that are true about us. We are light in the Lord. We are uh, here to light this present darkness, to be light in this present darkness. And Isaiah talked about the time when Christ would come. And in, in what, in, 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 as you go through Isaiah, what I want to do tonight is just briefly is to pick out, I think it's about 10 verses or so in Isaiah and talk about how they are real for you and I now. Isaiah is talking about a physical reality for the nation of Israel when Christ comes. And, and, and we know that, that at his second coming, this physical reality will be true for them. But we who have believed in the Lord Jesus, we are now part of the spiritual kingdom of God. And so I want to look at what Isaiah said that would be true of you and I. What is true of you and I? Because we are part, we are in Christ Jesus and he is in us. We are now light in the Lord. What is true about us and how does knowing this enable us to be bold, to stand firm, to stand up and say, I am no longer part of the darkness. I am now and forever light in the Lord. And that's uh, really how I want to end. So uh, if you would just turn to Isaiah and go to chapter 40. Isaiah, if you open your Bibles kind of roughly in the middle and uh, go to chapter 40. And we're just going to uh, go through. We're not going to stay in 40, but I'm just going to read some verses and then we're going to go back over them and talk about how they relate to us as believers. So we'll begin with Isaiah chapter 40, 10 and 11. Behold, the Lord God will come with might, with his arm ruling for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he will tend his flock. In his arm, he will gather the lambs and carry them in his bosom. He will gently lead the nursing ewes. Actually, I think for the sake of time, we'll go through them as, as I read them out. So uh, behold, Isaiah says, this is verse 10, the Lord God will come with might, with his arm ruling for him. Behold, his reward is with him um, and his recompense before him. How, how will Messiah come? How will the light come? He will come with power. He will come with power. And Paul will take this truth and he will say in Philippians chapter three. So if you could just hold your, your finger in uh, Isaiah chapter uh, 40 and go to Philippians chapter three. And um, we'll read uh, just a couple of verses. Philippians chapter three, and Paul will say in verse seven to 11, but whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss compared, um, 
I count more for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them but rubbish that I might gain Christ and may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith that I may know him, and here it is, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death in order that I may attain to the resurrection of the dead. Paul says in Philippians 3 that he counts all things as loss, as dung, as rubbish compared to knowing Christ. And specifically in verse 10, he talks about resurrection power. This is what Isaiah means, actually, when he talks about, behold, your, the Lord your God will come with might. He will come with power, his arm ruling for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. What is the reward that the Lord God will give to his people Israel, but has already given to us? We know that the reward is that we might know him and that we might know him by experience in relation he has given us his spirit who guarantees our inheritance, who guarantees our eternal life, who guarantees that we have an inheritance reserved in heaven for us. And the way that the Holy Spirit works in us is with power, with might, with resurrection power and that resurrection power has moved you from darkness to light has changed you from being a member of satan's kingdom to being a child of the living god that resurrection power in you enables you to put to death the deeds of your flesh that power the power of the holy spirit of the resurrected christ in you enables you to put to death the old you and to live in the truth of who you are now in Christ Jesus. You know, I quote it so many times, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature, the old has gone and the new has come. You have become a new creature, a creature of light, in the Lord, because you are in Christ Jesus. And it is the power of God who came for you, who has done that, and who is continuing to enable you to have the power, the resurrection power within you to move you away from, to put to death the deeds of your flesh, the deeds of your old time, the your old you, and, and start to walk by the power of the spirit of Christ. That is a promise. It's a promise of God made way back in the Old Testament, manifested in the living Jesus Christ, who is now alive within you by his spirit. Do you experience that resurrection power? That's the question. Do you experience the resurrection power of Christ Jesus at work within you? Do you know that you are being changed from the inside, that day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year, you are becoming more and more like Christ Jesus, the one who is the light of the world. You will know joy in times of difficulty. What does the resurrection power of Christ at work within you by the spirit of Christ who lives within you? He enables you to put to death the deeds of your flesh and he enables you to know joy when joy is the last possible thing that you could imagine experiencing in times of trial and difficulty. He will by his power, by his uh, might, with his arm ruling uh, for him. He has brought the reward to you because you have trusted in the one who is light and his reward is the power to die to your old self and to live in the newness of who you are in Christ. It is the power to know joy 
unending joy in the midst of difficult and trying and sometimes tragic circumstances. And he has given you the power to choose to live for him. He has given you the everyday resurrection power to make choices and, and, and enable those choices in such a way as would never have been possible before you knew the risen Jesus Christ. He has brought to you the resurrection power of Christ. He is, as verse 11 says here, like a shepherd, he will tend the, his flock. In his arm, he will gather the lambs and carry them in his bosom. He will gently lead the nursing ewes. This mighty God who came with might and power, who showed himself to be the living true God by his resurrection from the dead, offers to you and I that resurrection power. And at the same time as he offers this power, as he brings this power to us, he guarantees that he will lead us he will lead us as a shepherd leads his sheep he will guide us he will cherish us he will nurture us this power this resurrection power of christ has also in its in its realm the uh, the um experience of being held being held by a God who knows the end from the beginning and every day in between, who knows your struggle and knows your pain and knows your difficulty and has promised that he will bring to bear on your situation a power that is beyond anything you could think of and he will do it whilst gently holding you in his arms. This is the reality of Isaiah chapter 40, verse 10 and 11, for those who have put their trust in Jesus. This is the reality. In Isaiah 41, verse 14, um, um, sorry, Isaiah 41, verse 8 to 10. So turn, turn your page to Isaiah 41, verse 8 to 10. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, descendant of Abraham, my friend, you whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its remotest parts and said to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and not rejected you. And here it is. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. When Christ comes, he brings blessing and protection and strength and help. When Christ comes, you know, Isaiah is promising this to Israel, whom God has chosen, the nation whom he chose. He has said, I've taken you from the ends of the earth. And yes, that's not true about you and I. We are not uh, the physical people of Israel, but we, praise God, have been brought close by the blood of Jesus. You and I, as Gentile believers, have come into this wonderful family of God, and we can take hold, lay hold of all for which Christ has already laid hold of us the blessing and protection that Isaiah chapter 41 verse 8 to 10 promises to Israel is spiritually true for you and I today we have strength we have help we have enablement to stand up and stand firm that is is what God has promised so Ask the question, just as you asked the question a moment ago, do you experience resurrection power? Well, now ask yourself the question, do you, are you assured of the Lord's protection? Are you assured that he will protect you in any and every situation, spiritually? That he will hold your mind and your heart and your soul in the palm of his hand and you need never be afraid. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not look about you anxiously, for I am your God. Surely I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you with my righteous right hand. This is your God, and he is blessing you with protection. First Peter chapter 1, verse 5, Peter will say, For we are you are protected by the power of God through faith 
for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last day. You have the resurrection power of Christ Jesus within you by his spirit. And he is enabling you to live for God, to lay aside your old self, to live as light in the Lord. And that spirit of Christ has brought to you the blessing and the protection of Christ Jesus. And you must be asking yourself every day, do I know this power, this resurrection power? Do I believe that that power is for me, that is work at work in me? Or have I allowed the enemy to bring his thoughts and his, his scathing attacks and his, his arrows of damnation? Have I allowed them to lodge in my head? And am I turning them over and thinking about them as if they are true? Do I believe the word of God? Do you every day bless God and believe in and receive from him and thank him for the blessing of his protection? That's what we must do. We have to lay hold of. That's what Paul will say. I began in, in, in Philippians chapter three or as a little while ago just talked about Philippians chapter three how Paul talks about he wants to experience the resurrection power of Christ and what he will say is I haven't already got where I want to be not that I have already obtained he said but I press on I press on that I might lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus laid hold of me. And that's my question to you and to myself. Am I experiencing the resurrection power of Jesus Christ? Am I absolutely assured, convinced of his protection over me? Do I know that I know that I know that I know that one day I will stand before the living God and he will call me his own. Do you know this? And if you're wavering in it, now is the time to speak truth to your soul. Speak truth to your soul. For you are light in the Lord, and you are his, and he is yours now and forevermore. Now and forevermore. In Isaiah 41, verse 17 to 18, Isaiah will say, The afflicted and needy are seeking water, but there is none, and their tongue is parched and thirst uh, with thirst. I, the Lord, will answer them myself. As the God of Israel, I will not forsake them. I will open rivers on the bare heights and springs in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land fountains of water. Do you still experience a thirst, a thirst. Are you dry and barren and weak? Are you standing before the Lord and not experiencing those rivers of living water that Jesus spoke of in John chapter 7, that he would give us the spirit who would bring rivers of living water into our soul? Are you experiencing God making the barren land of your soul rich and fruitful and full of blessing. Do you know that river of living water running through you? Not yet. Let's not talk yet about you giving it out. Let's talk about you experiencing the resurrection power of Christ, the assurance of of your salvation, the assurance of his blessing and protection, and those rivers of living water that are watering your soul, that are meaning you are not thirsty, you are not thirsting, you are not dry, you are not barren land, you are starting to be fruitful in your own life, and later out into the world in which you live. Are you experiencing the fruit of the river of the living water? Are you experiencing this and are you nurturing the seed of his word within you? Are you nurturing the seed of his word? And by that, I mean, when you read his word, do you lay hold of it for yourself? Do you say, thank you, Lord? I know that this is your word to me. Are you doing this? Are you laying hold of all that Christ Jesus has laid hold of you for? Are you receiving the blessing of, of rivers of living water? 
Are you living in the truth of this? Are you experiencing Isaiah 42, verse 13? Isaiah 42, verse 13. The Lord will go forth like a warrior. He will arouse his zeal like a man of war. He will utter a shout. Yes, he will raise a war cry. He will prevail against his enemies. Is the Lord a warrior for you? Is he triumphing over all of your enemies? Because that is the promise of God for you, that no enemy will stand against you, that nothing can come against you if you are in Christ and he is in you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Are you believing that and laying hold of that? Are you laying hold of the truth of that? Not for the church, not for your fellowship, but for yourself. Do you believe that no weapon formed against you will prosper? Do you believe that the Lord will go forth like a warrior? I think in Jeremiah it says, the Lord is, a dread, is my dread champion. He is my champion. He goes before me. He sweeps away all the enemies that would stand in and, and ruin me. He promises me protection and blessing and resurrection power and assurance of salvation and rivers of living water. And he comes to me like a warrior and fights my battles for me. Do you experience this? Do you experience victory in Christ Jesus? Do you experience victory? Are you having victory over your flesh, over the sins of your flesh? Are you putting to death the deeds of your flesh and walking by the spirit? Or are you allowing yourself to be conformed to the world? Are you renewing your mind daily because you believe that that promise is for you, that you will be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ? Are you laying hold of these for yourself? Does Satan have any strongholds in your life? Does he have any places that he can put his hook in when he wants to and twist and twist and cause you pain? Are you letting him do this? Or are you standing in the strength of your Lord Jesus Christ and saying, no, I belong to Christ and you have no place in me? Do you say these things? Do you speak these things to yourself? Do you speak truth to your soul? Do you lay hold of these scriptures and, and, and speak them out, proclaim them out? Are you telling yourself the truth? Are you telling yourself the truth? And if you are not, please start doing it. Start speaking truth to your soul. Paul will say in Ephesians chapter 5, speak the truth in love. And he's, of course, talking about one another. But I want to say as well, speak the truth in love to yourself. Speak the truth in love to yourself. There is no sin that God doesn't know about. There is nothing that he hasn't forgiven you for. There is no place you could run to. No, no area that you could go where he wouldn't come after you. He is your good shepherd. He offers you abundant life. He offers you life beyond anything that you could think of. And he says that that life will be filled with joy and filled with peace. Yes, you will have to fight to hold on to it sometimes, because this world will seek to conform you to its mold. It will seek to drag you down and drag you in like quicksand. It will start pulling you down. You must fight sometimes every day, sometimes every moment of the day to lay hold of the truth of God, the truth of who he is and the truth of who you are in him. The Lord your God is a war warrior and he will triumph over all your enemies. Lay hold of that truth and don't give the enemy a moment to put his, his, his words in your head. 43, Isaiah 43, verse 25. I, even I, am the one who wipes out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. 
I will not remember your sins and I will blot out your transgressions for my sake, God says. I will blot them out. They will be as if they never existed and I will not remember your sins. As far as the east is from the west, he will say, so far as have I removed your transgressions from you. Do you know your sins are forgiven? Every single last one, even the ones you haven't yet thought of. Do you know that you know that you know that you are a forgiven child of God and that you stand in grace? You stand in grace and you stand right there, right there in the throne room of God. And you can come boldly to that throne room to find help in your time of need. Do you know these things for yourself? Do you know these things? Do you speak about the forgiveness that is available in Christ Jesus? Do you speak the truth to yourself and then do you speak it out to those you talk to? When people say to you, I can't come to God because I've done such terrible things. I've been such a terrible person. I have been to places I couldn't even tell you about. I can't come to God. Do you say to them the truth? There is no sin that he will not forgive. There is no place that you have been that he wasn't right there seeing you in it. Do you not know the love, this great love of God who will come to you in Christ Jesus? whose resurrection power will start to be at work within you. Don't shortchange yourself. You are light in this darkness. You don't belong to the darkness. You belong to the one who is light and he will shine through you. Do you forgive other people easily? Based on the forgiveness that you know for yourself, do you forgive other people? Because God has said here, I am going to wipe out your transgressions and I am never remembering your sin. Can you and do you say the same thing to other people? Are you so aware of the forgiveness of God for you that anything that anyone else has done seems so small in comparison? Are you a forgiving person? Ask yourself these questions. Isaiah 44 verse 3 to 5. For I will pour out water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. And they will spring up like they will spring up among the grass like poplars by streams of waters. This one will say, I am the Lord's. And that one will call on the name of Jacob. And another will write on his hand, belonging to the Lord, and will name Israel's name with um with honor do you live in the power of the spirit of god do you know that the redeemer pours out god's spirit on israel's descendants do you know that you are now a descendant of abraham that you are now loved in the lord jesus that you are now a child of god a member of the family of God and do you understand that his power is poured out his spirit is poured out on you and again come back all the time are you seeking to get closer to this God every day are you trusting his word to you are you trusting that these promises made to the nation of Israel for physical blessing are already yours spiritually because you have come into the one who is the kingdom of God. Do you believe this for yourself? And if you don't, won't you decide, won't you choose today that you will believe, that you will trust, that you will tell yourself these truths every day? Isaiah 49 um, verse 6, Isaiah 49 verse 6, you know, are you declaring your faith every day? Are you proclaiming the truth of the faith that was handed down to you, Jude will say? You know, in, in Jude's letter, he will say, I want, to, I want to tell you to contend earnestly for the faith that was once for all handed down to the saints. Do you know that you're a saint because you have believed in Jesus Christ? And are you contending for the faith? And first of all, are you contending against the enemy 
of your soul? Are you contending against the one who will keep on and on and on at you, that you are not good enough, that you will never amount to anything, that you are always going to be this or that or the other thing, that you will never be whole and strong and mighty and courageous in the Lord? Are you contending in this fight? Have you picked up the sword of the spirit, Paul will say in Ephesians chapter five? Have you picked up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God? And are you wielding it against the enemy of your soul? Are you living in the strength of the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ Jesus, the resurrection power of Christ Jesus? Are you standing in the light are you standing in the light who is Christ? He has given you life, and that life is the light of men. Do you know these things for yourself? Because we are reaching the end. We are at the end of this study, and we are, you know, at the end of this study. What God wants you and I to know is that we are light in the darkness, that we have a job to do, that we have a fight to fight. We have a set of armor that we need to put on, but we must believe the truth of that armor. You have to believe that you have a helmet of salvation, that you have a breastplate of righteousness, the righteousness of Christ. You have to believe that you have a shield of faith that is able to extinguish the arrows of the evil one. You have to know the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit and you have to be able to wield that sword against the enemy or he will constantly seek to do you in he will constantly seek to do you down read these verses these verses you know uh, 49 Isaiah 49 verse 6 he says, is it too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the preserved ones of Israel? I will also make you a light of the nations so that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. He will make Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah, a light to the nations. Why? So that his salvation will reach to the end of the earth. And what has Jesus done? He has given you his spirit, who is the light of the nations. And he has said, go, go into all the world and make disciples. Go and tell them about this joy and peace and protection and blessing and life that's available in my name. Go and do these things. Do you preach the gospel? Do you proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ? Do you tell other people? Do you know that Christ has inaugurated one new man, Jew and Gentile, in one body? Do you know? Do you know that you are part of the body of Christ Jesus? Oh, do you pray for Israel's redemption? Do you pray for her salvation? Do you comfort Israel? Do you, do you seek to bring Israel up to the Lord and bring them the Lord's comfort in, in her current state? Are you praying for the nation of Israel? Are you asking the Lord for his mercy and his grace based not on their behavior, but on his forgiveness and his grace and his mercy? Will you stand for her when all else Everyone else is against her. Will you stand for Israel because Israel is God's people? Will you do these things? And will you stand for me when I need you to stand for me? Will you stand for one another in the body of Christ? Will you lay hold of the resurrection power of Christ Jesus? Will you pick up the sword of the spirit? Will you put on the armor of God? Will you believe that you are now light? in the Lord. Do you understand the term chosen? Do you know that God is going to establish you as a person, as a, as a part of his kingdom? Do you know that he will establish a holy people, that you are part of a holy people, that you are a light on a hill? that you are part of the way that he is lighting up this world and drawing people to himself. Do you know that you're called holy by a holy God? Do you know that you are a holy nation, part of a holy group? Do you know these things about yourself? And do you believe them? 
Do you believe them? Paul will say in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8, he will say you used to be darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Will you shine as light? Will you let the Lord have control of you because you believe that he will do great and mighty, powerful works through you? Will you put your trust in him? Will you give him your life? Will you really choose to believe that the reason for your existence on this planet is to be an ambassador for the light, to be a light in the darkness? Will you choose to think about yourself that way? Will you lay aside all other thoughts, all other negative thoughts about yourself? Will you put a barrier up to any of those thoughts and will you decide to consign them to the garbage heap? Will you decide that you will live as light? Because believe me, I don't know what's going on in your life, your particular personal life at the moment. I don't know where you are. I don't know what's going on in your life. But I know that we are here now for such a time as this. This is the time for you and I to stand and be light in the Lord. Because this world, this dark, chaotic world needs to see the light of Christ. Awake, sleeper. Rise, arise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you so much that we are light in the Lord. And I ask, Father, for you to help us, really help us to, to lay hold of the truth of who we are in Christ, to forget about all the stuff of our life that would seek to lead us away, to, to, to put a stop to listening to the world's ideas and, and the ideas from our past and, or from the enemy's thoughts that come in. Will you help us, Lord, to really truly stand in the armour that you have provided, that we might stand firm, Lord, and that we might go out in your name, that we might be unafraid, to call ourselves holy, that we might be unafraid to say, I belong to the Lord Jesus and I am light in him. Oh, Lord, would you help us to, to believe these things about ourselves because we trust you who have told us these things. Lord, I thank you for this whole course that we've done just eight weeks of light in the darkness. I thank you for your word. I thank you so much for, for what you show us. And I ask, Lord God, that you would help us to lay hold of the truth and to speak that truth to ourselves and to one another. In Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen.